Welcome back, everyone, to the Z-Man Show as we're tackling another episode of Fear the Walking Dead. We're talking Season 5, Episode 11. It's called You're Still Here. And so we're going to go through the good and the bad and any of the mistakes they had for tonight. And um, we're going to get straight into it. So let's not waste any time. The good. What went down tonight? So I just want to talk about the walkers at the beginning of this episode, by the way. Very, very good. I was loving that uh, that one walker that was actually intertwined in the... Tw- uh, like the the, the vines were growing within its body and so forth. Although I was getting super annoyed with Alicia and still not being able to kill, nonetheless, that's part of her storyline right now. And it was just kind of cool to see that walker just kind of rip its own self to pieces as it went towards her. Not to forget to mention also there was a zombie that um, Strand took out moments after by tossing that uh, the, 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 uh, the part of that machine gun that's all jacked up and put it right into its head and it just kind of sliced it right off. So, very, very cool, Walkers. I want to talk about Wes a little bit, and I'm really liking his character in general. Uh, I just wrote here that I kind of, I really, I'm liking his ideals and kind of what he stands for. Because although Morgan and all the rest of these guys are on this journey to help everybody, not everybody needs to be helped, nor do they want to be helped. And I feel that's kind of where Wes is at this kind of point in time. And in some ways he does need help, but... Anyways, to get back to it, um, I thought it was kind of cool to see that him and his brother and some others, I guess, called them Eaters, called the Zombies Eaters. So it was kind of neat to see the other kinds of names that people are calling the walkers around the world. Um, he did mention a brother, uh, but when the by the time our friends get to help Wes and get him to this police station, it's not his brother that he's after. He's after this, uh, this thief who pretty much stole uh, this book and manuscript from him. And so he's trying to track him down, and a shootout ensues, and this guy ends up stealing their truck. Anyways, a bunch of this crazy mess, but... Um, but I, I just I put out a point to why would they be so big on and I'm talking about Strand and Alicia on helping this guy, which Wes has already told him that this guy is a thief, you know, he's an a-hole to begin with, and so but yet they're still trying to help this guy. I mean, it, talk about going above and beyond. It's it's much more than I would be able to do as a person. I'd love to hear from any of you. Would you be willing to go that far? I mean, to help a person who, by the way, just stole your vehicle transportation, has left you stranded now, and also surrounded by a bunch of different zombies. I'm just I, I don't think the love's gonna be there. Sorry, just just throwing it out there. Uh, but I did like his attitude uh, toward Alicia. You know, he, like he just doesn't want to really be helped. He, you know, he's already where he needs to be, and or at least so he feels. I, I do believe that's BS in a bit, a uh, bit of ways. But, uh, anyways, I'm on board with his ideals though. So, um, the Walker scene, by the way, as they got up to that police precinct and they were like all chewing on that uh, cow that was over the side. Just great background noise. I was loving it. Just seeing more Walker interaction and uh, the animals around that they're they're taking on to. Uh, the unexpected riot gear weapon backfire was interesting. So they, they had those weapons in front of them as they were retreating into the police precinct and Strand fired off that shotgun round and that was actually a tear gas round. He didn't expect that. Totally quickly backfired on him, although I believe Strand could have moved a lot quicker to get out of the way, but let's just say, for argument's sake, that he was making sure Alicia and Wes got to safety first, but ultimately <laughs> uh, getting Strand totally blinded and you know totally out of breath as well. But he survives, and so that was pretty neat scene, I thought, overall. Uh, Logan, I'm going to put a, a point on him, that he's playing a pretty good a-hole bad guy right now. I mean, not the devious devious of all. I mean, obviously not really, but maybe that's because he may do a turnaround later in the season. It's hard to say. The guy is being, being a big, like I said, a big a-hole. So we'll have to see. I, I get his motives. I understand why he wants the gas, but I believe that they would use it for bad and not for good. So I, I, I tend to lean towards our survivors and, and their goals to try and keep that oil and gas hidden from uh, Logan and his dick squad as long as he can, or as long as they can, so for that matter. So I give him a point for that. Um, and Morgan straight up almost throat st- stabs Logan. And when he brings up, uh, uh, Logan brings up Morgan's wife and kid. And Morgan's like, what did you say? I'll tell you, I was loving that scene. I give, I'm giving at least a solid point for that because it was part of that Morgan that I kind of miss. And I wish would come back a bit. Not that I wanted to be a, psy- a psychopath and just go murder everything in the world. But it was, it was neat to see that come back for just a moment. Um... I was also like, you know, Wes was a decent shot and, and able to defend himself. Although I, I thought, it contradicted a little bit because I thought it sounded like he hadn't killed anybody yet. When Alicia asked, how many people have you killed? A little throwback maybe to Rick in his days uh, of his questions in The Walking Dead uh, to the newcomers that he met. So, again, I you know, we don't know a whole lot about Wes, but uh, anyways, I'm overall liking his character. So I'm just going to throw that out there. It was uh, also nice to see that... The all-knowing Althea did not do anything super crazy or fix something amazingly out of her scope tonight. Uh, but she did make a good comment 
uh, talking about how the ghosts of our past don't define who we are in the future. And I, I believe that to some extent. However, we know that the ghosts that we have in our past do linger over us. And it's it's hard to get past that, as we've been trying to see Morgan do for many years now, actually, we can say that. So maybe maybe Morgan will finally be able to get past this, and, and that might be a good building step for him. And also maybe to help his relationship that was building there with Grace last week, because that could be fun. I, th I really think it could. Uh, I love the scene with the runaway guy when it was making it look like he was a walker. Because I, I seriously thought he was. And uh, so that was a little bit of a twist when you got up there to find that he wasn't actually a walker. But although I'm giving a point added for that scene, I'm also kind of confused by this whole set of scenes that follow right after that. So follow me with this and see if you guys, please explain it to me because I did not get it. So this thief guy, he stole the manuscript, right? Wes wants it back, willing to kill for it, in fact. So... Uh, Wes finally approaches this guy after talking to Alicia and maybe saying, oh, maybe I shouldn't kill this guy, whatever. He goes up to him, thinking he's a walker, calls out to him. Said thief turns around, sees him, and immediately starts choking out Wes on the ground, trying to kill him pretty much, forcing Wes to defend himself. Wes then takes said ice pick, stabs it in the side of the said thief, and then thief falls over and, you know, is pretty much bleeding out, uh, about to die. And then, within almost a moment's notice, after Wes says, where's the manuscript? And he says... The guy replies, oh, you wrote that? I'm, I'm just like, huh? And like like his total demeanor, I'm like, dude, you're about to die for this thing. So anyways, the guy's amazed that you know, Wes was actually the one that wrote this thing and that the said thief just wanted to finish the material because he thought it was some awesome stuff. I'm like, you want him to die for this thing? I'm like, holy crap, man. I, I'm, it's, it's just blowing my mind a little bit. I'm not fully grabbing the concept. And I was trying, I wrote in here, I was trying to figure out, is the whole point of this that like senseless and unneeded killing it's like what's the point and it's bad so proving alicia and morgan and strand and all their theory that you should be out there trying to help people and the world can rebuild to a better place i don't know please tell me what you thought the point of that that whole sequence of scenes were because it was very confusing to me i'm not still not sure i'm on board maybe it'll come to me in an epiphany later in the week we'll see what happens there um so, we find out Wes was the tree painter after all. So, after all the little, uh, I guess, cat and mouse, and of course, not that Alicia even knew this, but in the car, you know, Wes was like, so, you're looking for that painter guy because he saw the video, the promo video, if you will. And uh, Alicia's like, yeah, it's going, but not really well. And Wes is like, yeah, good luck with that. And so, you know, it was kind of kind of fun to find out that Wes actually was the guy. They found the paint and the brushes in his uh, broken down bike, right? So, that was kind of neat. Um, I also put... Perhaps Alicia has learned a little something from Wes, too, in this whole debacle thing. Maybe showing that, um, showing her that you have, you're going to have to find your own way and you can't always follow others. I think that could have been a big uh, lesson learned for Alicia in this episode. At least we'll see if it sticks. I don't know if it will or not. But killing the walker at the end feels like this kind of solidifies this thought, so... Good, good for her. It, she needs to move on because I had put a point in the bed, which we'll get to in a second, that if she continues this route, it's not going to do anything good for her. So, um, and then Al thought her tapes were going to be safe in that uh, that uh, safe within the bank, right? And so basically, you know, we see like this earthquake thing going on. I was like, what the hell is happening right now? And friggin' Logan and his crew pretty much rip the whole safe door out of the wall itself. And I was like, yeah, I guess that actually probably could happen. And anywho, uh, they get to Al's tapes. They're also looking for uh, Clayton's um, journals because they want to find the oil fields, see if there's any clues there. So we'll see where that ends out. I'm sure Althea will be none too happy when she finds out her tapes are now gone. And I'm sure they took them because Logan knows how important they are to Althea. Uh, the bad. There's not as much, to, again, this week. Again, not I'm saying this is a stellar episode, but the bad I had on this one includes uh, Alicia and she, she makes a comment to Strand about halfway through the episode, uh, saying that, you know, maybe you're right and I shouldn't be out here. I'm thinking to myself, you think? <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, Alicia. You're going to have to kill walkers. I mean, if you don't want to kill people, that's going one route. But not to kill walkers and defend your friends and yourself. You're going to get them and yourself killed quick. So it was good to see by the end that she's she's finally getting it back. So it finally came full circle, but I have to ding the episode because I'm just like, I'm like, Alicia, thank you for pointing out the obvious. You'd be great at cinema sins, right? Um, so uh, Morgan, I put also, he, isn't he getting a bit sloppy with his kills? I mean, no doubt. He can't be, I guess, on the mark every, every single time, but that's kind of his discipline and his study after Eastman and whatnot. So the fact that earlier in that, um, uh, in the building, when he takes the swipe at the one last walker and totally slips and wipes out. And then I think it was Al had to come in and pretty much 
finish the walker before it got him. I mean, he made mistakes in Grace's episode last week. He made this big mistake in this one. I'm thinking to myself, is there something wrong with Morgan? Is he okay, like, physically? I hope he didn't catch something from the radiation and all that jazz. That could be a, a crazy twist in itself, but we'll find out, I guess, soon enough. Uh, also... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going back to that point, and I'm, this is the ding for that guy earlier. So, why would anyone want to help somebody who, again, who's just taken your truck, uh, stolen some supplies within? I mean, mind you, yes, he's being shot at, so he's in a frenzy, he's trying to get away, but I'm just like, but yeah, but you have still have sympathy for this guy? Like, you truly want to help him? I'm like, maybe this guy isn't so good, and he's not going to see the light. There are just truly bad people out there that don't want to see the light, they just want to cause hell and evil just because they can't we see it every day in our news and it's a damn shame but this is the world we live in it's 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 terrible but anyway so guys that was where the good and the bad for tonight's episode i didn't get too deep on that i think uh make sure to make, uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this uh kind of recap for the episode we've been doing like the good the bad and the mistakes or the ugly if you will uh, and i didn't see too many mistakes tonight my wife caught one that when strand was tapping the uh the, the the metal piece from the machine gun that's Alicia's weapon when he's tapping it she caught a scene where it actually looked like it actually wasn't hitting the ground it looks like they're just adding in the sound effects that could have been a possible mistake you know I, maybe we'll ding it for that I don't know but all the same it was a pretty solid episode I'm gonna give it a seven I'm gonna give this an, an overall seven for tonight's episode and again moving in a better direction uh, the right direction uh, that could be argued but all the same, at least they're kind of getting on some better content and not doing super crazy stuff that are just outside of the spectrum of their skills. So with that said, I am Mike with the ZMAM Show. I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure to come back out tomorrow if you uh, want to learn more about how to make a zombie film. I'm going to produce the first episode talking about makeup. It's uh, three parts for the makeup. There's just so much information in there. I'm going to talk about tomorrow the three types of makeup that you might want to use. Grease. Uh, alcohol based and then actually a water based makeup that proves to be a lot stronger than most so make sure to come on and check those out and I will talk to you guys at the next review. See you guys.